I'm David Tubman. We're here today to talk about the DTR reticle, dynamic targeting reticle. It means that it's an ever-changing environment in the field that you're shooting. The elevation changes, the windage changes, the various ranges change, the angle changes, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about this reticle and what makes it so advantageous, in my opinion, of course, uh, compared to anything else on the market. <clears throat> if we do a quick little synopsis, uh, most everybody is used to the square crosshair. And, and honestly, they're, the only thing a square crosshair is good for is one distance and one wind condition. Now, obviously, you can turn the knobs and make it usable for other distances and other wind conditions. But one of the advantages of using a DTR reticle is the speed that you gain from this. The other thing is most people have a <clears throat> reticle that's either in mils or mil radians, let's say, in mils or tenth of a mils or so on and so forth, and or they have a reticle that is in minutes of angle. So, and for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to talk about yards, but we also have meters, and we could also do meters per second instead of miles per hour. But for this for this scenario, we're going to talk about the distance of yards and our wind in miles per hour. So when you have a DTR reticle, <clears throat> what you're doing is you're calling your distance in yards, you're holding your distance in yards, your corrected distance in yards, because it won't always be the exact the same because of the atmospherics. And then the other thing we're doing is we're calling our wind in miles per hour, and we're hold, and then of course, obviously, we're vectoring the angle of the wind, but we're holding our wind in miles per hour. We have to do zero conversions from a mo from a yardage hold to an moa or mil elevation hold, and we have to do zero uh, zero to get us to a mile per hour hold because we're calling miles per hour. We don't have to convert it to a mil hold. The 10 mile an hour wind is one mil and or the 10 mile an hour wind is a minute. The other advantages is <clears throat> this is the fact that if we shoot at a target using this reticle at say 500 yards at 12 o'clock and the conditions remain the same on a flat level plane for the next shot and let's say that shot's 900 yards away we're going to hold the same wind value that we used to hit the 500 yard target five miles an hour let's say and in this scope, the wind dots are incremented out in fives, tens, fifteens, twenties, and in some cases, 25 miles an hour. Kind of give you a little picture of what we do, why this works this way. Is and obviously anybody who buys a DTR scope, which is designed to have an operating range. Uh, let's say that this is a this just happens to be. A DTR V1C, so that means it's a 308 yardage scope. And <clears throat> while obviously we're not looking through the reticle, there's some stuff on the outside that gives us away. Uh, there's a little formula on the back that helps us solve our atmospherics, which is the delta or the distance equals the nominal. The nominal means this rifle, gun, ammo combination gets assigned a value, a density altitude value. Easy way to look at that, look at the scope cap. Okay? It says right here that this is a DTR 1BC and a yardage scope, and that's for a 175 grain 30 caliber bullet. And obviously, this is usable with more than one bullet and more than one velocity combination. So, how do you change that or how do you accomplish that? Is you come up with another scope cap that's got a little bit different velocity data and assignment values. So this is actually a more universal usable scope than just one bullet and one velocity. This, this scope really works in about a 250 foot per second operating range. And so if we look at 308s, so it's a 308 yardage scope, and we go, okay, what will this fit? Well, if you've got a 16 inch gun or you've got a 24 inch gun, which is probably way in the 90 percentiles of the 308s on the market, and you're shooting a 175 grain bullet from somewhere about 2450 up to 2700 feet a second, this is the scope for you. Additionally, every scope at the top here has a little density altitude graph, and I know a lot of people don't know what density altitude is, 
But if you've got a ballistics program, and let's just use that. I'll make it simple. You've got a bullet, and you've got a velocity of the bullet. You have a center line over bore height to the scope. And then the other factors are temperature, pressure, elevation, humidity. And everybody goes, well, what if you change this to a one, you know, changes 10 degrees or 15 degrees? And you go, well, if, you're, if, it goes, if the temperature goes warmer, then the air gets thinner. And if the temperature gets colder, it gets colder. Thicker. So the bullet fly to the target is effective. Now, is it affected a great deal? Well, when we pass 500 yards, it starts becoming a big, big deal. So to kind of jump in real quickly with the ballistics program, with this scope, not that you need one, but this shows you how this will work. Is here we are, we have five different reticles we can pick from. We're going to stick with a 308. We're talking about a 308 here. We're going to go back to our ballistics program we talked about. There's a muzzle velocity. That one's going is 2575. There's a center line of a bore height. You can obviously just tap this and you can change any of this stuff. Let's say we were to put this back to 2575. Why? There we go. So we go up, we have a zero range, and then we come down here to the bottom, we have bullets. And here's the number of bullets you can use with these various reticles. The idea behind this is, is to show you as a training tool, um, but in fact, if you have this scope and you have a 308 and it goes to this velocity range, you don't need a ballistic scope. But let's just say you want to use this scope on top of your Daisy Red Rider BB gun. And guess what? You can use this scope in conjunction with this ballistics program to shoot your BB gun. It shows you the variety or the, <clears throat> the versatility of this if, in fact, you need that. I would not promote that, but that's one of the options. All right. So we, we said we were going to pick a 175. There we are. So we've got, so again, the, the, the muzzle velocity, side height zero range, and we pick the bullet. Right. And the next one would be, we're going to, what units are we going to work in? Well, we're going to have a little formula at the bottom because not only is this work for a density, a, a, a dynamic targeting reticle, but this ballistic program will work with your mill scope or will work with your minute of angle scope. If you notice, I can pick in yards or meters, center grade or uh, Fahrenheit, and then I use ADA, density altitude. You can also use density units if I desire, but we'll stick with ADA. And everybody goes, well, what is density altitude? Well, density altitude is that part of the ballistics program that was basically the temperature, pressure, elevation, humidity all watered up into single number denominations. It's what the pilots use to figure out their, their air density when they're landing or taking off. And we have basically evolved that into using this as planning the flight of the bullet to the target kind of like the flight of the airplane to the next city. Here we are. So we're going to go right to the firing solution. So here's what the reticle looks like in the scope, the bottom half. As I roll it up, you're going to see it kind of looks like a Christmas tree. The one thing to know about this is that if you look at the center line here, as it goes up and down, it's not straight, right? It's a parabolic curve, even though it's not much showing here. What that means is you have a true no wind zero at each yard line as opposed to the rifle scope that's got the square crosshair. And as your bullet transverses downrange, the spin drift or precession of the bullet moves to the right. How much? At 1,000 yards, your 308 is going to move about 10 inches to the right with no other bullet flap phenomenon involved. Right? So that means that your wind zero is off at 1,000 yards. Your wind zero is all, your true wind zero is always on, as long as obviously you have this level plane scope. You have a level on your, a little bubble level on your gun. As long as it's level, you're going to know that you have a true no wind zero. The other advantages to this scope are the fact that you, we talked about the wind drift dots and miles per hour. So let's take 800. There's the 800 yard line if you run it across. There's a center eight, that's your whole point, the bottom of the eight. Bottom circle in the eight. There's a five mile an hour, a 10 mile an hour, a 15 mile an hour, a 20 mile an hour, and a 25 mile an hour wind drift knot, okay? Off both sides. Now, let's just say that we're going to shoot this rifle in a 4K DA condition. And if you 
notice on that scope we assigned this if it was 2575 it says 4k da so if it was a 4k da atmospheric outside we shoot this reticle exactly like it looks and you go, well how, how do you do that and you, the easy way to do this is you go it's not hard for you to figure out where a 300 yard dot is for, okay or a 400 or a 500 or a 600 or a seven or an eight, or as you go down, there's a thousand, a zero, there's a twelve hundred, right? It's pretty simple. If I didn't, if you know nothing except the gun zeroed, and I want you to shoot three hundred yards, I think you could figure that out. I think also you could figure out. I go, okay, I want you to shoot three hundred yards, but I want you to shoot five miles an hour of right to left wind. So the wind is coming from the right, which would be over on this side for the, for the viewer. The wind's coming that way, okay? So you would hold this center dot into the wind, so that your whole point would be this first dot to the left by a mile an hour wind drift dot. All right, we're going to change our atmospherics here. We can run this. If you want to, you can run this off of measured, estimated, or you can run your Kestrel. We're going to pick the Kestrel, and we're going to start with a 4K DA because we have an assigned gun ammo rifle scope value of four. And if you notice, here's 200 yards right here, and there's our 200 yard hold point, the level line. That's 100 yards right there. And let's let's go to 800 yards. So we're going to shoot 800 yard shot. All right. So it says we hold 801 yards here. Right? We're off a yard. No wind. Zero wind. Now, what do we do if our atmospheric changes, all right? We say 4K DA, 4,000 foot of density altitude air value, right? Well, if you looked on the, on the bottom of the scope, on the objective, which we talked about earlier, and it said here is the distance is the nominal assigned value, which we assigned this gun rifle scope, a 4. Take a silver sharpie and write a 4 up here on the bell. Minus the current atmospheric. So let's say we're going to go to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and it's sea level condition. Ocean's out there, and it's 59 or 60 degrees. If you know anything about it, about the density altitude, that's going to give you a zero kDA atmospheric condition. And so right here, nominal, this gun's four. Minus current, four minus zero is four. So that's our factoring number. So we need to remember that. We're going to factor by four. Come back to this reticle, which is inside the scope. If you look over here on the left side, you see these little numbers that are turned sideways, they're lazy numbers. Those represent your point of impact change in yards for every 1,000 foot of density altitude change, 1 kDA. So we just said we had a four gun right here, but we're going to change it to a zero. So four minus zero is four. So at 800 yards, four times this little sideways eight right there. 4 times 8 is 32. It's a positive number. So in Virginia Beach, Virginia, we'd add 32 yards to the 800-yard measured distance, and we'd our effective hold point would be 832 yards. So watch what happens when I change the density altitude to zero here. Go back. What's our hold point? 835 yards. Okay. So I'm off three yards. Very, very good. You can't hold three yards. And you never touch the knobs on your scope. Right? Most of the DTR reticles come with scope caps on both the elevation and the turret. Ideally, you zero your gun at 200 yards, and you never touch it again. Let's go one more. Let's go to another elevation or another shooting condition. Let's say we go to Raton, New Mexico. And at Raton, New Mexico, if you know how to read a density altitude graph or you have your Kestrel, let's say it's about 6,500 feet of elevation. Let's say it's a summer day, it's 80 degrees. Well, if you do the math on that and it comes up on your Kestrel and or you do the, the DA graph, you're going to find out that you have a 9,000 foot, a 9K DA day. So if you go back to your little formula on the bottom of the scope, we have a Ford gun because of the velocity and ammo. So the distance is the nominal 4 minus the current of 9. And 4 minus 9 is, a lot of people say 5, and that is not correct. It's negative 5. You can't 
stress that enough. It's 5,000 feet of density altitude thinner air. So 4 minus 9 is 5. I'm sorry, 4 minus 9 is minus 5. See, I'm trying to do this. Just to check it. See if you all are paying attention. Minus 5 times the air density correction number. Well, here we go back to 800 yards. And our air density correction number is an 8. So minus 5 times 8 is minus 40. And the shot was measured at 800 yards. So 40 from 800 is 760. So our effective hole point at that distance is 760. So watch what happens when I change this to a 9 kDA. It says we hold 765 yards. That's extremely close. And we didn't need a ballistics computer to tell us that. All we needed was our rifle, our gun, our scope to solve our ballistics solution to get the target at distance. That was a quick little show off on that thing. Uh, what we're going to cut to now is we're going to try to cut to a series of videos that we shot uh, hunting baboons in South Africa. And you're going to see that not only do we have fast shots, we have wind in the shots, we have slope angle in the shots, we have the same sort of density altitude corrections in the shots. And hopefully you'll you'll get some enjoyment out of the video as well as you'll really understand that this particular reticle is like nothing else on